the use of coil ash to stabilize a soil surface by enhancing development of biogenic rust. A soil ecologist, I am coming from this part of the, the, of the research. Mm. Um, I need to give you some background why we uh, did this research. Uh, in the northwestern Negev, the area is actually looking like that. It's a sandy area, uh, stabilized by a uh, few shrubs, about 10% uh, shrubs cover and 90% of biogenic crust. What is biogenic crust? It's a photosynthetic uh, organisms, mainly cyanobacteria, uh, filamentous one. And when you close you, ah, I think the light is not good. Uh, when you close you, you can see the crust, it's all green, especially when it's wet. And it stabilizes the soil surface. Uh, this is the area that we work on uh, uh, north, north east, northwestern Negev. Uh, the problem in this area, when why we came up with the idea, is that when uh, they want to build a new uh, settlement in this area. And what they did, they took about 20 square kilometers uh, of the sandy dune and just flattened them with heavy equipment uh, for agriculture purpose. Uh, this is uh, the new settlement in this area. And this is uh, the newer. And this, you see all the uh, heavy uh, work that they did over there. What's happened is uh, every day you have a breeze in the afternoon. And I took these photos in the afternoon. And you see what's happening. Uh, this wind erosion and sand grain migration in all the area. And that's caused a lot of trouble to the agriculture land. The sand is covering the area. This is, I took this, this is photo from <coughs> Google. But when you get inside, then to the field, you can see what's happening. It's, uh, this has a severe economic, of course, implication. And you can see what's happening. This is the carrots and potato fields. Uh, the leaves are looking bad. Some of the, the, the potatoes just uh, exposed. OK, so what we did, we went to this area, and we isolated this filamentous cyanobacteria, Microcholeus <coughs> vaginatus, from this area. and. The idea was to use this cyanobacteria. And why is it? Be you can see a close view of what's happened. This is the filament of cyanobacteria. They exert polysaccharide that's gluing them together. And the idea was uh, because the natural inoc uh, inoculation in this area, it's take or after disturbance, take about between 5 to 10 years, how we can uh, make this time shorter. And the idea was to use uh, fly ash, uh, the small particle of fly ash, that will help them to jump from one particle to another. Uh, this is the, the mutilac polysaccharide. And this is our, the soil aggregate. So it's actually covering everything. Uh, when, in, in color, of course, everything is green over here. So uh, the research includes four phases. We have laboratory experiment, uh, wind tunnel experiment, field experiment, and uh, eolian greenhouse experiment. Well, this was come only lately because uh, we have a problem with this experiment. So I'll, I'll show you uh, soon. Uh, it, we start in the beginning by not knowing what will happen to the cyanobacteria if we will add the coil ash. They will grow. No, I don't, we didn't know. We didn't know how much the amount that we're <coughs> going to use. So how to measure the, uh, the parameter of the growth of the cyanobacteria? We know there is in the literature. We can uh, learn about the levels of the polysaccharide, the chlorophyll, uh, by lab extraction, and, and, and DVI index. And of course, we can measure the soil uh, surface stability. So the results from this small experiment in the lab the first step is that first the coil ash did not present, not, uh, prevent uh, cyanobacterial growth. And that was good. For the beginning, it, it's not uh, killing them, so we can keep on. No difference were found between 2 to 4% relating to the cyanobacterial <coughs> growth efficiency. Uh, in all treatment, the increase of growth parameter was obtained, contributing to soil surface stability, 
uh, compared to the control sand. So we can conclude that we can use 2% uh, of uh, coil ash uh, plus in uh, inoculated uh, cyanobacteria. The second experiment was wind tunnel experiment. Uh, the, experiment uh, the experiment in growing <coughs> tray was conducted with uh, uh, addition of 2% uh, coil ash, not flying coal. The tray was transferred to the growth chamber with uh, continuous illumination. After two months, we uh, moved them to the Aeolian Simulation Laboratory in Ben Gurion University. And uh, the idea was uh, to test the survival strength of the different wind intensity corresponding to the wind velocities in the northern Negev area. We use uh, a 0 0.5 to 1 meter tray, about 1 centimeter high depth with 2% coil ash, and we measure the growth parameter that uh, I mentioned before. This is the first result, and immediately what we saw, and this is the number of particle uh, impact. We put a microphone over there, and with the wind, we measure the amount of the impact of the, of the sand particles. And you can see immediately, in the sand control, it was much, much higher when we inoc with the inoculant plus minus the coil ash. So that gave us the idea that actually we're going to the good direction. When we look at the soil surface stability, uh, the, inoc the soil, the sand with the inoculant, 2% uh, coil ash and the inoculant plus coil ash were much, much higher stable than the uh, control sand. So, uh, actually, we can summarize that and we conclude that the wind tunnel experiment showed the importance of the biogenic crust plus minus coil ash in the, uh, preventing the soil erosion. Quantitative simulation, aeolic drift of sand and sandy soil. Uh, here we use the uh, two of them, one in the agricultural land that is being prepared in the area and in the Aeolian greenhouse uh, facility. Uh, we use four different treatments, fly ash, uh, uh, high speed for cyanobacterial, and cyanobacterial incubation, uh, inoculant, sorry, uh, and control sand. And the goal was to find the best treatment for stabilizing the soil surface from aeolic erosion by analyzing the sediment erosion at four different high, but here I will I summarize all of them together because no time for <coughs> to present all of them. Uh, and <coughs> the value in, in, the same, in the wind velocity of four, six, eight, and 10 meters per <coughs> second, each velocity was tested for about uh, 120 uh, seconds. Oh, I have to go back, oops, okay. Now what's happened in the field, two weeks before we finished the experiment, we had a, a one of the decade windstorm, and this is the area how it's looked before, and this is the area how it's looked after. You see a new sand dune just built on the two experiment with the coil ash. So we can compare only the inoculant and uh, the control. And, uh, in the first, in the four meter uh, per second uh, wind, velo wind velocity, nothing happened. Okay, it's very low. It's actually the, the background uh, concentration. When we increase to six meter per second, uh, in, the in the control sand, the peak was about 0 0.68 uh, milligram per cubic meter and a minimum of 0 0.08 milligram per cubic meter was found in the uh, inoculation. So immediately there's sand and this is the, with the inoculation. Increasing the speed to eight meter per second, now we see clearly what's happened with the uh, sand control. It's reaching to about 1.6 uh, uh, in compared to about 0 0.2 in the inoculant. And this is going a long term, a long uh, term. This is a very short period in compare, only about uh, 45 seconds. Increasing to 10 meter per second, now we see, we receive a very good uh, results from the inoculation. We can see that inoculated is moving, although of 
course, the control is much higher. Uh, after the problem that we have in the field with uh, the one decade storm, we're afraid that this will happen again. So we moved to work in the uh, Aeolian greenhouse experiment in the Ben Gurion University. And this is how it looked like in the beginning. We moved about 20 ton of sand from the area, put it in the greenhouse. We put some uh, fly ash, coil ash, and after mixing it uh, to the one centimeter soil surface. These are the results. When we look at the chlorophyll uh, level, the inoculant treatment, coil ash, and the inoculant plus in, uh, coil ash are much higher in level of the chlorophyll in compared to the control sand. And when we're looking at the breaking pressure, we use a field penetrometer. Again, all the three treatment gave us a higher results and of course, uh, significant from the uh, control. When we're looking at the level of the polysaccharide, all the three of them are much higher and significant than the control, but the one with the coil ash and the inoculant with the coil ash are much higher. <coughs> when we looked at the soil surface st stability, again, we got almost the same results. Although over here it's not, it's not uh, statistically significant, over here to these, of course, it's, it's better. Uh, the impact uh, of the agriculture, uh, of the aggregate, uh, sorry, particle. Here you can see very clearly that uh, the, the aggregate when in the sand control are smaller than what's in, in the, from the three, uh, treatment. Uh, of course, if you have a larger aggregate, it's, uh, it's more easily uh, 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 to prevent soil ero uh, wind erosion than the soil uh, sand and grain. So let's to see the conclusion from all this. In the laboratory experiment, the 2% flying ash, fly, uh, fly ash versus inoculant is the amount needed to stabilize the soil surface by enhancing uh, development of biogenic crust. In the wind tunnel experiment, uh, the importance of the biogenic crust plus minus coil ash in preventing soil erosion, same result. Uh, the contribution of the, uh, to the soil stability to the soil surface ability. In the field experiment, the uh, untreated plot showed the lack of stability in compared to the, uh, the one with the biogenic. And of course, the biogenic uh, improved the uh, prevention of soil erosion. The level, level of polysaccharide chlorophyll and the NDVI index in the three treatment, uh, coil ash inoculant and coil ash plus inoculant compared to the control sand show increase in all the parameters and contribution to soil surface stability. And the major impact of adding the coil ash to the sandy soil surface is rapid enhancement uh, of, so of soil uh, stabilization. And actually, we reached to this point three months later in compared to five to 10 years in natural uh, condition. These are the team that's worked with us uh, from Gilat Research Center and uh, Katif, uh, Aeolian Re uh, Simulation Laboratory at Ben Gurion University, the Soil Erosion Station of uh, Ministry of Agriculture. And thank you. <laughs>